In this video, we're going to discuss how to predict the radioactivity of a particular isotope and to determine what type of radiation that would give off. This is all going to be done using the graphs that we should have created in class of proton to neutron ratios for stable isotopes. Let's start with a quick rundown of some learning objectives. Uh, we're going to review the causes of radiation. Why do some elements give off radiation, whereas other ones do not? We're going to review and discuss that plot of stable nuclei again, just so we all make sure that we understand what that plot is really showing us. And then the important part of the discussion is to actually use the plot itself. We should be able to identify from the plot if an isotope is stable or radioactive. And we should also be able to identify from the plot, if it's radioactive, what type of radiation will be given off in the process. All of this then gets bundled into the ability to rewrite a nuclear reaction depicting that radiation going off again. This uh, topic in general tends to be a kind of a capstone of this entire unit where it really pulls a lot of the pieces that we put together uh, upon our discovery of the atom into one big problem. Let's review quickly some causes of radiation. Why do certain atoms give off radiation whereas others do not? Now, if you recall, unstable nuclei are the ones that give off radiation. Now the question would be is why would a particular nucleus be unstable? If you recall from previous videos, uh, it's about the balance of the number of protons to the number of neutrons. Too many protons is a particular type of instability, and that instability results in too much repulsion force. And if you recall from our physics discussion earlier, our repulsion force in this case, because of those too many protons, is going to result in too much of the strong force. Likewise, another possible reason our nucleus would be unstable is too many neutrons. Too many neutrons is going to result in too much strong force, and as a result, again, we're going to get an imbalance in our two forces and net instability in our nucleus. Now, when these atoms, these unstable nuclei, give off radiation, they give off a specific type of radiation that fixes the specific problem. Uh, if you've got too many protons, you're going to give off radiation that reduces the number of protons. If you have too many neutrons, you're going to give off radiation that reduces the number of neutrons. There was a previous video that goes over these different radiation types. Uh, and again, a specific type fixes a specific problem. And that's part of our job today is to identify what that specific radiation is to fix the nucleus we're currently working with. To understand uh, how to make these predictions, we're going to get back to our proton to neutron ratio plot uh, for stable nuclei. If you recall, we made this plot from a table of stable radioisotopes, uh, and from that table we were able to pull out some information. We were able to figure out the number of protons in each stable isotope, and we were able to figure out the number of neutrons in each stable isotope. We made a big long data table, and these are the points we're able to plot. As you can see from the plot, we got a pretty definitive shape to all of our data values, and these data points represent the range of stable proton to neutron ratio. So these are the atoms that have the stability we're looking for. These are the ones that have the strong force approximately equal to our repulsion force. Now we can highlight the range of data that is plotted here, and this would represent the group of atoms that have that ideal ratio of protons to neutrons. These nuclei are stable, because their strong force is approximately equal to their repulsion force. So we can label this region we've just written here as being our stable isotopes. I very strongly recommend that you take your graph out at this time and label it the same way I'm labeling it. Later on, we'll be using this graph to predict stability as well as predicting what type of radiation each one would give off. So again, the first region we've pointed out here is the stable region. If you have an atom that has a certain number of protons, let's say for example 50, and it has a certain number of neutrons, let's say for example 65, and you plot a point corresponding to that, that point ends up in the stable region. This would tell us that our nucleus in this case is a stable nucleus. If it ends up anywhere outside of the region, either below or above the graph here, that would tell us that our nucleus was unstable, and that would also hint to us that eventually radiation is going to be given off in the process. So this is the first layer of what you can do with this graph, is predicting the stability of your nucleus. Now taking this a step further, we can go and predict what type of radiation it's going to give off. If you're in the region above, or in, your, in the region below, that means you're unstable, and you're going to give off radiation. If you look at the shape of your plots here, if we go up on our plot, we are increasing the number of neutrons. That tells us that this region up here represents a place where we have too many 
neutrons. And if you recall from before, this is one of the types of instability we identified from before. Too many neutrons tells us that we have too much strong force. We need to give off a type of radiation that's going to reduce the number of neutrons and reduce the strong force. Likewise, we could give off radiation that increases the number of protons, both of which will get us to the same goal. The question then is what types of radiation are going to get us to that. Uh, in a later video, we're going to discuss the mechanics behind why certain or what certain radiations do when they come out of the nucleus of an atom, but for now, we'll just identify those. Uh, one of the obvious culprits here that could get the job done would be neutron emission. Neutron emission is when we eject a neutron straight out of the nucleus. If we get rid of this neutron, we are reducing the number of neutrons and we'll no longer have too many. Another type of radiation that's less obvious would be beta emission. When you give off a beta particle, a beta particle turns a neutron into a proton and that's going to reduce the number of neutrons and increase the number of protons. So a quick recap. If you plot your point from your particular atom, and it lands in the stable region, you know your isotope is stable. No radiation will be given off, you have nothing left to talk about. If you plot your point and it ends up outside of this stable region, we know our atom is unstable, and depending on where it is, it's going to tell us what it has too much of, too many neutrons in this case, and it will also allow us then to predict what type of radiation will be given off. Any atom that's plotted in this region up here is going to either give off neutron emission or beta emission as its radiation type. Now the next place we have to talk about it then is below the graph. Uh, you might suspect that below the graph has the opposite characteristics and it most certainly does. When you're plotting below the graph this means you have too many protons. Too many protons means you have too much repulsion force and you're going to give off some type of radiation that's going to fix this particular scenario. Again, it might not be obvious to you at this stage in the game, but that type of radiation is going to be positron emission. Positron emission turns a proton back into a neutron. Not too surprising. It's the opposite of beta emission. Um, and that's going to reduce the number of protons and increase the number of neutrons uh, in our graph. And it's going to solve again the problems we're talking about up here. Our last region we need to talk about is a little bit different than the others. Uh, that region pretty much covers everything in the top corner of our graph up here. Uh, in this region, we're talking about atoms with atomic mass, uh, with a mass that is greater than or equal to 200 atomic mass units. These types of atoms are always going to go off the same type of radiation, and that is alpha radiation. And this is true regardless of whether we're inside the stable region or the outside the stable region. Alpha radiation is an atom that is simply, or things with mass that are greater than 200 is simply an atom that is too large. And because of that excess size, it is automatically unstable. And as a result, alpha particles get rid of two protons and two neutrons. It doesn't really do anything to affect the ratio. All it does is it moves us this way on the graph. And notice it moves us along that band of stability, um, but it moves us out of this range of these highly massive atoms. So that's the last piece to look out for. This is the three P types of uh, ranges or areas we're going to be looking into. It's above the graph, below the graph, or up here in the top corner, wherever you have masses greater than 200 atomic mass units. And that's going to allow you to pick what type of radiation is being given off. There's not too much to discuss about this topic. I think at this stage in the game, we should try a couple of these problems. We'll do one together, and then I'll give you a couple more to try on your own. Our first practice problem deals with a zinc-90 isotope. The goal here, again, is to identify if it's stable or radioactive, to identify what type of radiation this type of element would give off, and finally, if it does give off radiation, to show the nuclear reaction depicting that. Uh, to figure this out, we're going to, again, use our plots from before. We need to know the number of protons and the number of neutrons we're dealing with, and that's recalling back to your understanding of nuclear symbols. Uh, number of protons is the atomic number, which is in the bottom left here. The top left number is not the number of neutrons, but rather the mass. Uh, if you take this mass of 90, subtract out the number of protons, you're going to find out they're dealing with 60 neutrons in this particular atom. So we have 30 protons and 60 neutrons. 
Our goal with this information is to plot it on the graph and see where it lands. Where it lands on the graph is going to determine if it's stable, and it's also going to determine what type of radiation will be given off. If you recall from before, we said we had 30 protons, so we're going to plot that on the x-axis with protons. We had 60 neutrons, we're going to plot that on the y-axis for neutrons, and we're going to create a point right here. That point is outside of our stable region, our stable nuclei are down here, and as a result, the first thing we can say about this atom is that it is unstable. We can say that it is unstable slash radioactive. This atom would give off radiation. We plotted our point right here at 30 comma 60. We see that we are above the stable region. And if you recall from the graph we wrote down before, this means we will give off either beta emission or neutron emission. So the answer you can put down for our second part here would be either beta or neutron. And your last step would then be to write a nuclear reaction depicting this. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You could write the reaction showing beta or you can write the reaction showing neutron. Both of them will get you full credit. Realistically speaking, this zinc isotope would only actually give off one or the two of them, not both. Meaning there are some other forces at play here that would cause the atom to choose beta over neutron or to choose neutron over beta. We're not going to get into those types of mechanics, so you have the option of choosing either one. I'm going to go with the beta particle simply because it represents some more difficult mathematics. Um, so going back to our example here, we have 90, 30, zinc. It's a decay reaction, so there's only one reactant. We write to see the product. We already identified one of our products as being a beta particle. We end up getting... Um, 90 on top of our mass, 0 and 90 adds up to the 90 we started with, and we end up getting 31 as our atomic number. 31 plus negative 1 adds up to 30. And if we look up on our periodic table, element number 31 is the element gallium. So that's a reaction now that depicts this radioactive zinc atom giving off its beta radiation and then having the residual atom left over, which is gallium. The gallium is more stable than the zinc was, but in all likelihood, this is not the last radioactive event that would occur. You would get a series of these events, creating new atoms and new atoms and atoms. This is known as a cascade. And then finally, that cascade would end with an atom that eventually falls back into that stable region. Let's try another example. This one I'm going to give you the opportunity to take a look at on your own. This is neodymium-100. Determine if it's radioactive, determine what type of radiation it would give off if it's radioactive, and then finally show a nuclear reaction depicting that radiation. You might want to take a minute right now to pause the video, give the problem a try, and then the next slide will go over the answer. If you recall from before, we were talking about the element neodymium-100, and we want to determine if this element is stable or unstable, and if unstable, what type of radiation would give off. Well, first off, we need to figure out how many protons or neutrons. Atomic number tells us that there are 60 protons. And then some math here, mass minus protons, is going to tell us that we're dealing with 40 neutrons. Take these points and plot them on your graph. We're going to compare this location of the point to the points that we already have plotted. So we're going to go over here to 60 for our number of protons, and we're going to go over here to 40 for our number of neutrons, and we get a point that's right about here. This is well below the curve we're talking about here. So the first thing we can say about this atom is it is indeed unstable. And if you recall from the graph earlier, being below the curve means the only type of radiation we can give off is positron radiation. Positron is going to reduce the number of protons. We are too far to the right. And it's going to increase the number of neutrons. We are too far down. And that's going to move my point back over here because my protons will drop. And it's going to move it up over here because my neutrons will increase. And I want you to notice the net movement here is back towards that band of stability. So let's see if we can't put some of this information down on paper and then finally write a reaction depicting this happening. So yes, we've identified this reaction as being uh, unstable, it's radioactive. Um, we also timed that positron emission was the most likely type of radiation that would give off. It's the one that fixes the type of instability. And then finally, dear, towards the bottom, we have a reaction actually showing that. We have our new dimmy 100 giving off its positron right here. 
and then ultimately we're resulting in a new atom, uh, which is praseodymium, 50, or praseodymium 100. Let's try one more practice problem. Uh, in this case, we're going to have neodymium again, but instead of being neodymium 100, now we're talking about neodymium 145. Same again. Determine if it's stable or radioactive. If radioactive, determine what type of radiation it would give off, and then finally show the nuclear reaction of that radiation being given off. Again, pause the video, give this problem a quick try, and then we'll go over the answers. Going back one last time to our graph, now we're talking about neodymium-145. We want to again figure out the number of protons and neutrons. It's still neodymium, so it still has 60 protons. Uh, in this case, again, we do some math here. The mass on the top minus the number of protons on the bottom is going to tell us that we're dealing with 85 neutrons. We're going to plot our points just like before. We're going to say number of protons is 60, number of neutrons is 85. That's going to be somewhere here. And now we're going to get a point somewhere in this region. This point ends up within the band of stability. It ends up matching the data points we already have, and this would tell us that this neodymium isotope, neodymium-145, is stable. Going back to the question, we can say that yes, this isotope is stable. It's not going to give off any radiation, and it's not going to have a nuclear reaction depicting that. This isotope should stay the same for a relatively long period of time. Altogether, this is about as complex as these problems ever get. It's simply a matter of figuring out protons and neutrons, plotting the relative point, or relevant points, and then recalling what type of radiation associates with that if the atom is radioactive or not.